Hi, Dr. J here. We're going to do the Laplace transform of a cosine function, which was similar what we did with the Laplace transform of a sine function. Again, uh, to find the Laplace transform of a cosine function, you need two things. One is the linearity. It says that you have a linear combination of inputs, F1 and F2, scaled by constants A and B. And the Laplace transform of this linear combination of inputs is the corresponding combination of its Fourier transforms for each of the functions f1 and f2. So here we have a f1 of s plus b times f2 of s. And the other property you need uh, in finding the Laplace transform of a cosine function is the Laplace transform of an exponential where we define our exponential as f of t equal to e to the minus alpha t u of t and the Laplace transform is 1 over s plus alpha. A minus alpha in the exponent of the time domain and in the frequency domain it corresponds to 1 over s plus alpha. So here's how about we go about finding the Laplace transform of a cosine. You show that the Laplace transform is beta over s squared plus beta squared. And we need to know the Euler Euler's formula. And Euler's is e to the j beta t equals e to the cosine beta t plus j sine of beta t. Kind of amazing formula because it relates a complex exponential with trigonometric functions. Another way to view this is that uh, this could be the polar form of a complex number where it has an amplitude of 1 and an angle of beta t. And this is the rectangular form where the x-coordinate or the real part is cosine beta t and the y or imaginary part is sine beta t. Now the complex conjugate of this is that we know we put a minus j in the imaginary part. So we have here and therefore that and that corresponds to e to the minus j beta t. When you add these two equations, on the left side we have e to the j beta t plus e to the minus j beta t. On the right side we have the two sine functions cancel and you add up the two cosine functions giving you two cosine beta t. And when you solve for cosine beta t we have basically uh, one half the sum of the two complex exponentials. So cosine beta t equals e to the j beta t plus e to the minus j beta t divided by 2. Now we'll break up the sum into two different terms so we can apply the concept of linearity. And now we have these two terms e to the j beta t divided by 2 plus e to the minus j beta t divided by 2. So when you apply the concept of linearity, the Laplace transform of these two terms is the Laplace transform of each of these terms. The first term is just e to the j beta t divided by 2, and we're going to take the Laplace transform of this. But this is just an exponential function where instead of alpha, we have j beta. So the Laplace transform for this complex exponential corresponds to 1 over s minus j beta and we have the scale factor of one half and one half appears in both of these terms so I factor it out here. In the second term we have the complex uh, exponential of e to the minus j beta t and its corresponding Laplace transform is 1 over s plus j beta. Putting these two terms in, in a common denominator like we did within the sine function uh, derivation we have s plus j beta plus s minus j beta and we see that uh, j betas cancel out and what we have here in the numerator is s plus s which leads to 2s which cancels out with the 2 here so that just leaves s in the numerator and again in the denominator we have a difference of squares s times s is equal to s squared and the inner and outer products cancel and then we have minus j beta times j beta leads to beta squared where j is the square root of negative one and we square that 
that becomes negative 1, but we have a minus sign, so a minus minus makes this a plus. Hence, this is the Laplace transform of a cosine function. Next, I'll provide another derivation of the Laplace transform of a cosine using the integration property. And that will be discussed in an upcoming video. So as a summary, here's the Laplace transform of a sine and cosine. So the sine is given by this causal sine function. And its corresponding Laplace transform is beta divided by s squared plus beta squared. And for the cosine uh, function, cosine beta t multiplied by the step function u of t, which makes this function causal, we have s divided by s squared plus beta squared, where we have the denominator to be the same, and the only difference is in the numerator, where the sine has a beta term, and the cosine in the numerator has an s term for the Laplace transform. Signing off, Dr. J.